CNN reported on May 7th that China's annual emissions exceeded those of all developed nations combined in 2019. Minutes later, the Swedish girl Greta Thunberg retweeted and commented, China is still characterized as a developing country by WTO. Exactly yes. With the world's 19 population, China produced 17% of the world's total GDP in 2019. At the same time, China's per capita emissions were 10.1 tons in the year, lower than that of any developed nations. Greta continued, we can't solve the climate crisis unless China drastically changes course. Absolutely yes, climate change is a public issue. Aside of China, no single country can survive alone. Shame! In September 2020, at the 75th United Nations General Assembly, China pledged to peak its carbon emissions by 2030 and to achieve carbon neutrality by 2060. These two targets were written into the government's 2021 working report. In December 2020, the EU proposed climate neutrality. Months later, the US proposed net zero emissions. So what are the differences between the two and China's carbon neutrality? China's goal is to neutralize carbon dioxide, while the EU and the US neutralize other greenhouse gases as well, such as methane and nitrous oxide. What's more, EU's climate neutrality also takes into consideration other factors that may have an impact on the climate system, such as the contrails of planes. Carbon emissions peak is the basis of carbon neutrality. The EU countries reached their carbon emissions peak in 1990, and the US did in 2007. Though their climate neutrality and net zero emissions targets are set to be achieved by 2050. By contrast, the year gap between China's carbon emission peak and climate neutrality is only 30 years. How can China speed up to achieve that? These are the two globally accepted methods, increasing carbon sinks and reducing emissions. Increasing carbon sinks means absorbing carbon dioxide in the atmosphere through planting and restoring vegetation. In 2019, China's forest coverage has reached 22.96%, rising from 16.55% in 2000. The world's average is 31.7%. Emission reduction depends on clean energy and renewable energy. As of 2018, clean energy occupies 64% of primary energy consumption in France, 56% in the UK, and 46.2% in the US. In China's current energy structure, this figure is 23.4%. Meanwhile, electricity generated by the renewable energy in China takes up 29.5% of the total electricity consumption, 9.5 percentage points more than 2012. However, China's coal consumption still accounts for more than 50% of domestic energy consumption. It's been a long time since the world came to realize the balance of economy and nature. After the United Nations Framework Convention on Climate Change in 1992 and the Kyoto Protocol in 1997, 175 national leaders signed the Paris Agreement in April 2016, aiming to make plans on confronting global climate changes after 2020. The agreement arranges for regular assessments on the performances of each country to take place every five years, starting from 2023. Thanks to the effort, the growth of China's carbon emissions has slowed down since 2005, from an annual growth of 10.25% in 2005 to minus 0.43% in 2015. And in 2019, China's carbon emission intensely, namely carbon emissions per unit of GDP, dropped by 48.1% compared to 2005. However, China still faces serious challenges in transitioning into low-carbon manufacture. In the same tweet, Greta Thunberg also said, China manufacture a lot of our products and so on. But that's of course no excuse for ruining future and present living conditions. Somehow, the international label of products made in China is still one of low price but high energy consumption, which means China remains still at the low end of the global industrial value chain. In the next 30 years, China's investment in carbon neutrality is expected to exceed 
21.45 trillion U.S. dollars, while public financial expenditure may cover no more than 20% of that number. This means everyone in the country will have to be involved into this dramatical transition.